Senator, hello, Richard Sadlier, First Assistant Secretary, uh, International Security Division. G'day, Mr. Sadlier. Welcome back. <coughs> um, it's good that you're here because I wanted to ask a couple of questions just by way of preamble about a meeting that occurred between the 4th and the 8th of July 2016 that I understand you were present at, um, uh, in which you and uh, Ms Jane Hardy travelled to Washington DC to meet with a range of, I understand, quite senior State Department and National Security Council people to discuss what was then the, referred to as the UN Open-Ended Working Group on Nuclear Disarmament. Firstly, can you just confirm for us on the record that that meeting occurred and that you were in attendance? Sorry, Senator, could you give me the dates, please? 4th to the 8th of July, 2016. 2016. Uh, Senator, um, we engage uh, US interlocutors um, uh, quite regularly on no, arms control and disarmament issues. Don't start on that one with me. Were you at the meeting 4th to the 8th of July, 2016, with, uh, with that agenda item on the table? I know you discuss a range of matters with a range of people, so we can set that aside. Uh, Senator, things that we discuss with uh, uh, US officials in uh, private meetings are confidential I haven't asked, bilateral I haven't communications. asked yep. what you discussed yet. Were you in attendance at that meeting? S Senator, uh, uh, I was certainly in Washington, uh, and I'd need to check my diary to get the precise dates, but I was certainly uh, there around about that time. Okay. I think what will happen when you check the dates is that you'll come back and confirm you were in fact there, so I'm not sure. All right. I'll just, I'll let you check the record. I'd appreciate that. What was the purpose of those meetings? And I'm happy if you, if you want to contest the date range that I've given you and come back with different dates, that's fine. But what was the purpose of those meetings in particular? Uh, Senator, uh, as I've said to you before, we engage uh, US interlocutors on a whole range of issues relevant to my portfolio. Uh, and of course, the precise details of what we discuss in uh, uh, bilateral meetings of that sort uh, with counterparts is uh, confidential. I don't know if you've noticed, but I haven't asked you for precise details. I've asked you what the purpose of the meeting was. It's about as general a phrasing uh, as I could come up with. So, Senator, we, we discussed uh, uh, international security issues. Okay. Did you discuss the open-ended working group on nuclear disarmament as an international security issue? It's probably the largest international security issue that there is. Uh, Senator, it won't be drawn on communications, uh, the details of our discussions. So that's Chair, all. can I get your advice? The witness is being remarkably evasive. I'm not after matters of state fair, security. He's, or, he's just declining to answer for reasons. Well, what is the point of us showing up at these committees if witnesses just decline so to we'll, answer? We'll this is fairly Chairman. basic stuff. Through you, Mr Chairman. Minister. Senator, as you know, there are some questions ought not to be asked and may not be answered. The witness has merely indicated that the questions that you have asked him are questions that he doesn't consider he is at liberty to answer. He's not being evasive. It's the very definition of evasion. Chair, could I get your advice? Because I've engaged um, this matter with senior DFAT people over the previous nine years, and it's not out of bounds of an estimates committee to ask as to the broad topic of a meeting at which taxpayers pay for your airfare. Uh, you are correct. Uh, it is not um, uh, outside your remit to ask the questions, uh, Senator Ludlam, but it is also within the capacity of the witness. Uh, in, in this case, he's making the claim that the subject matter uh, of discussions in this case with, uh, with his US counterparts is not a matter which he can canvass in the public arena. Okay. Uh, and that's where that stands. So would you continue with your questions and if he's able to respond to them, I'll direct him to do so. If yeah. he's not able to, uh, he will avail himself of that opportunity. All right, understood. Thank you, Chair. What I might do then is take, uh, ask you to take a couple of questions on notice. My understanding, which is why this all seems a little bit silly, is that you were you and Ms. Uh, Ms Hardy were discussing the UN open-ended working group on nuclear disarmament, which was shortly to meet. So you can't tell me whether that's the case or not. You won't, I presume, be able to tell me the outcomes. What I'm interested to know, firstly, is whether you could provide us on notice with the public interest immunity ground on which you're declining to respond to a perfectly reasonable question, whether it's national security or commercial and confidence or whether cabinet matters were discussed, rather than just coming back with, no, I'm not gonna answer your question. And if you do decide 
that you're able to disclose just the very broad parameters of the purpose of that meeting, whether or not the United States government instructed or encouraged Australia to take any particular position at the UN Working Group or subsequent negotiations. That's really where I was going to take this conversation if you'd been forthcoming. Okay, thank you. Well, that will give the officer okay. an opportunity to consider can we that just, response. Yeah, can we just uh, hear from the officer just to close that loop? Yes, of course. Uh, thank you, Senator. Um, uh, uh, very happy to take those questions on notice. Thank you. Chair, yes. I'll come back with some separate thank questions. You, Chair. After the I just wanted to advise that I can confirm that uh, uh, Jane Hardy and myself were in Washington between 4 and 8 July. Mm -hmm and uh, that we uh, discussed with a range of uh, senior State Department and National Security Council uh, officials the open-ended working group. Thank that you, wasn't Chair. so hard, was it? Um, thank Welcome you back, much. Mr. Sadler, and I acknowledge uh, and thank you for uh, the answer that you provided us just now in the meetings that you're in attendance of. Um, what I was interested to know, and you don't have to go into particular detail, but did the United States government instruct or encourage Australia to take any position in particular at the UN Working Group meetings which occurred shortly after um, you were in DC? Uh, Senator, we consulted with many states regarding our position on the OEWG and we were lobbied by um, a large number of states across the membership. I can of, imagine. Of, of, uh, uh, a whole range of uh, inter international uh, uh, meetings and activities. Uh, so, uh, uh, you could say that uh, all of our positions, uh, we exchange views with a great many countries, but at the end of the day, uh, Australia's decision to participate uh, was very much a matter of uh, determining our own national interest uh, and we've articulated in this forum before yep. the reasons why we decided uh, not to uh, participate in the ban treaty negotiations and also why we uh, called a vote in the OEWG. Yeah, I wanna, I'd, li I'd like to come to the ban treaty negotiations in a sec. Yep. Um, is it fair to say then, and I know you have to choose your words a little bit carefully, that the US government lobbied us to take a particular position in the OEWG and Australia took that on board and then formed our own view? Uh, Senator, it's fair to say that um, we were aware of the views of the United States and a uh, whole diversity of members on all sides of the debate. Mm. Uh, and uh, uh, Senator, you're, you're well aware of the, uh, the uh, United States position on, 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 on uh, the ban treaty. Yeah, they want it to just go away. They're not interested in disarmament. Uh, Senator, the, uh, uh, I can only speak about Australia's uh, That's okay. position. Yep. All right. Um, is, it, is it your um, view that Australia participated in that open-ended working group in good faith? Because we were treated as saboteurs. They call us, um, there's a particular word for it that'll, that'll come to me, but I don't think Australia did a great deal to enhance its international standard, uh, standing. But do you consider that our negotiators played in good faith? Uh, Senator, I consider that um Right up to the wire, we were uh, clearly we have to uh, prepare for all eventualities. But right yep. up to the wire, we were acting in good faith, trying to get the right the right outcome for Australia, which was to which was to crash the working group so that it didn't come up with a resolution. Senator, it wasn't to crash the working group; it was to try and get a balanced text which reflected both the progressive approach to um, nuclear disarmament and the ban treaty approach. Right. Uh, so the purpose of the OEWG was to find ways forward across the whole uh, range of uh, uh, multilateral activity in the area of nuclear disarmament, sure, sure. and we wanted to have a text which, uh, you know, balanced and, uh, and uh, you know, constructive ways reflected the views of all the players, and uh, regrettably the final text was not one which uh, supporters of uh, a progressive or building blocks approach could accept. When you say uh, balanced, you mean an outcome in which no disarmament negotiations would take place? No, I, I mean a text in which the views of proponents of a ban treaty uh, were balanced with the views of proponents of a building blocks progressive approach, so that you could look at the text and see that it was a, uh, a balanced text reflecting all of those views. This is, this is hilarious. I remember the word that we're referred to by, it's weasels, they call us weasels, which I would 
I guess I'm not asking you, you to comment. You expect the witness, I think, to comment on that, Senator. Um, but in your experience, had you come across that phrase before? I, I'm not certain, actually, Mr Sally, how close to the OEWG you were, whether you participated or not, so forgive me for that. But I presume you've been around these talks for a while. Uh, uh, Senator, I didn't participate in the did. OEWG activity. Were you aware that other delegates I, I, referred to the Australian I delegation as weasels? I, well, I can't comment on that. No, it's just a simple yes or no. Had you heard that phrase before I put it to you at the table here? In reference specifically to Australia's negotiators? Uh, Senator, I'd certainly seen the, the uh, term uh, used in uh, material. Yeah. I'll call that a yes. All right, so this is, this is all a bit retrospective. Let's come to what's actually happening now. Um, I just want to quote some talking points relating to these negotiations that I understand originated from the department. So long as the threat of nuclear attack exists, US extended nuclear deterrence will serve Australia's fundamental national security interests. My question to you is whether Australia's adherence to the doctrine of extended nuclear deterrence was a factor in our decision to boycott the UN negotiations that are taking place. Uh, Senator, uh, we wouldn't characterise it as a boycott. Um, well, we're we not made a, a national decision not to participate That's on the basis that it wasn't in our national interests. But yes, I can confirm that one factor in that was um, uh, the importance in a very, very insecure uh, environment uh, where security considerations have to be taken into account. Right. And I think we see that every day with the behaviour of the DPRK, ah, that extended gonna... nuclear deterrence um, was a factor. It's going to come to them, so since you've, since you've raised North Korea. Are you of the view, though, that legitimising the threat and use of nuclear weapons is, and that being the official and formal policy of the Australian government, is precisely the wrong signal to send to rogue states such as North Korea that are, that are um, progressing towards their own nuclear capability. And this, you've just legitimised the use of nuclear weapons or the threat of use of nuclear weapons right here at this table. Uh, Senator, I think I was just making the point that um, uh, a ban treaty isn't going to deter the DPRK in terms of its acquisition of nuclear weapons. Uh, and indeed, I, I note that the DPRK voted for a ban treaty in, 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 in uh, 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 First Committee. Mm. And I believe the Iranian government did as well. Anyway, that's a statement rather than a question. So Australia does legitimise and believe that use or threat of use of nuclear weapons is a legitimate international public policy instrument, as it were. Uh, Senator, my point was that we uh, have a, uh, um, a very strong alliance relationship with the United States uh, and that as part of that alliance relationship, um, uh, the uh, conventional and nuclear forces of the United States are a vital source of stability and security in our region and in the world. And uh, so long as uh, the world uh, uh, contains nuclear weapon states who threaten uh, 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 other states, you need to have the, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the ability to rely on ex extended deterrence it's, and US deterrence. It's a remarkably circular line of logic, isn't it? The existence of nuclear weapons calls or invokes the need for the continued existence of nuclear weapons. Perhaps we might take that also as a statement. May you can if you like. I'll come out with you some, um, some questions. Um, I want to turn to the opening day of the Nuclear Weapons Ban Treaty negotiations, March 27 mm -hmm. uh, of this year, and having failed to prevent these negotiations from occurring, the Trump administration's ambassador to the UN held a protest outside the UN General Assembly Hall. Did Australia participate in that protest? Uh, Senator, it wasn't a protest, it was a, a press conference uh, it was in which the views of a, a group of countries uh, with respect to the ban treaty were expressed. Uh, okay, it's been written up everywhere from the New York Times on down as a protest, but let's not quibble. I've participated in any number of protests in my life, Mr Sadley. I'm not, not down on that as a, as a mode of expression, but did Australia participate in that press conference, if you will? Uh, yes, uh, we were represented there. And what did we hope? What did Australia hope to achieve by participating in this protest press conference? Uh, Senator, it was an opportunity to uh, uh, have uh, the views of uh, a number of countries that 
uh, didn't support uh, ban negotiations uh, be registered and heard. Okay. So I understand Australia didn't speak. There's no transcript record that indicates the Australian representative spoke at that press conference. Is that right? No, that's correct. Um, uh, so we just stood there in mute solidarity with the Trump administration as 130 UN member states started serious work on negotiating a nuclear weapons ban treaty. We were outside the room in a protest. Uh, we uh, were standing there uh, 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 aligning with the remarks that were made. And I should point out that uh, uh, because uh, our head of mission was here in Australia, uh, we were represented by a deputy head of mission. So um, uh, it would have been unlikely that we would have spoken anyway uh, in those circumstances okay. because it was a more junior representative because of uh, the need for our head of mission to be in Australia for the uh, GHOM, I believe it was. All right, understood. Thank you. The, UA, the US ambassador, who obviously did speak at the press conference, claimed that nearly 40 nations were boycotting the negotiations. Um, I guess we can just take that as read. We assume that, that they shouldn't count. Are any of those nations from Southeast Asia or the Pacific? Uh, Senator, um, uh, certainly in terms of the Pacific, Japan and the Republic of Korea are not participating. There's uh, two other nuclear weapons umbrella states, by uh, stunning coincidence. Um, uh, 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 if I can just go through the list, sure. I'm quite happy to say No, no, that countries, countries in our region, Southeast Asia or the Pacific, if you like. Uh, there are a number of Pacific countries which, uh, um, beyond Japan and the ROK, but I think it's best that I take that on notice for you, Senator, so I give you an accurate answer, All right. uh, given the numbers involved. That's fair enough, and it mm -hmm. you know, only covers half the surface area of the planet, so that's fair enough. Are countries such as Indonesia and New Zealand participating in the negotiations, two of our closest and most important neighbours? Uh, Indonesia and New Zealand are participating, yes. They are. Is it your understanding, and maybe this would need to go on notice as well, because you'll need to probably just do some correlation, but do all of the boycotting nations claim protection from nuclear weapons in the way that it's expressed in our defence white paper and in the way that you've just put to us this, after, no, this morning? Senator, I'll, I'll take that on yeah. notice for you. I'm quite happy to, to look at those statistics um, um, uh, and get back to you. Thank you. Did Canada and Germany participate in the protest? Uh, Senator, uh, I don't believe they did, but I'd like to take that on. Uh, by the way, sorry, Senator, not press a protest, conference. press conference. Uh, I don't believe they did, but I better take that on notice to make sure that you get uh, 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 an accurate answer. Okay. My final question, getting the wind up here. Um, I'm, it's a shame that there will be no Australian representatives at the UN because these talks are scheduled to conclude um, end, of July, uh, end of June, early July. So my question firstly is, will Australia have anybody in the room even claiming observer status? I'm planning on attending. Um, I think it's an enormous shame that we won't be formally represented there. But what will, the Australia, what will be the policy of the Australian government when it is hoped uh, a formal binding legal international agreement to ban nuclear weapons comes into force? Is it the intention of the Australian government to stay outside the tent or are we actually going to constructively engage at some point? Uh, Senator, just uh, uh, firstly, in terms of your, your first career about representation, yep. um, uh, I suspect we'll have no one present, but as you know, it's a transparent process. Um, you're able to follow a lot of it um, through web streaming and, and other activities. And of course, uh, uh, all the states involved in the ne negotiations actually do uh, speak to us regularly and, and, and lobby us and engage yep. us. So uh, we get a pretty good feel for for what's going on. Right, so we'll and have eyes on even if we're not formally or informally in the room. Senator, in the case of uh, a, great many of multi, uh, a great many meetings where we can't be everywhere at once, uh, uh, quite apart from the ban treaty negotiations, we have ways of sort of uh, open and transparent ways of um, right. uh, uh, managing that. Uh, as for your second question, uh, Australia's uh, position is, is, on this is clear. Obviously, the, those are issues which uh, ultimately rest with ministers and governments, but uh, uh, our position has been clearly enunciated. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you, Senator Ludd. My 